Welcome to the book Publishing 101 for Geographers. Um, hi, I'm Doris. Um, I'm part of the Geography and Sustainability Research Team. Um, and here to um, tell you a little bit more about, about publishing um, with Springer Nature and the whole process involved. On our agenda today, um, I'm going to do an introduction of our team, of everyone on the Earth Science team, on our Geography and Sustainability Research team, um, just to give you a broad overview on um, who's involved, how, how big our team is, um, who um, who is in charge of which series, who, or like who gatekeeps which series, um, and things like that, just to give you a broad outline um, of, of what we do, of who we are. Um, Next in line, we're going to go for, um, through the benefits of publishing a book and of publishing a book with Springer Nature. Then I'm going to elaborate on the steps on what it takes to publish a book um, with us. And then I'm just going to talk very quickly about um, a Springer, Springer Nature as a book publisher, what we do, um, what we've done in the past and what we're looking to do in the future. Um, I'm hoping that's going to take me um, somewhere around an hour, uh, half an hour to 40 minutes um, and that should leave plenty of time um, for a Q&A session at the end. Okay, so um, here I'm going to introduce the uh, Science, Geography and Env Environmental Sciences Books team um, in a next step. Um, the Earth Sciences Book Editorial team, um, we have the following colleagues there. That is Lisa Fan, she's a senior editor in Beijing. Um, she co covers all areas um, of earth and environmental sciences. Um, she gatekeeps some series, for example, the Future Earth Integrated Risk Governments Project series um, and other series on the topics of um, atmosphere, earth, ocean and, and, and space. Um, Yusuke Nishida, um, he's an editor in our Tokyo office. Um, he also cover areas, covers areas of earth and environmental science. Um, he is a gatekeeper for several series um, on the topics of disaster risk reduction, disaster management, um, mitigation engineering, um, integrated disaster risk management. So anything to do with uh, disasters, um, Yusuke um, gatekeeps a lot of those series. Um, we also have Dr. Alexis Viscaino. He's an editor in Heidelberg. Um, he focuses on petroleum geology, on mineral resor resources, sedimentology, geophysics, and nature conservation. Uh, Simon Rolfs, associate editor, also in Heidelberg, um, is relatively new to our team. Um, he covers all areas of earth and environmental sciences. Um, and upon, upon joining Springer Nature, I think it was last year, um, he had a large focus on the German language titles. Um, completing this team and head of this team is uh, Dr. Annette Büttner, she's executive editor, also in Heidelberg. Um, she focuses on geology, on geochemistry, on volcanology, mineralogy um, and geophysics and gatekeeps several um, series on just those topics. As part of our Geography and Sustainable Research Books editorial team, um, we have our team lead, Dr. Robert Doe. He's executive editor here in the Netherlands. Um, as you can see, um, our team is generally um, spread out either between the New York office or the office in the Netherlands um, in Dordrecht, just south of Rotterdam. Um, Robert focuses on geography, environmental sciences, um, climate, meteorology, and atmospheric sciences. Um, he runs several uh, book series, particularly in the areas um, of climate and atmosphere, but he also covers, it, covers soil sciences and um, geomorphology. Margaret um, focuses on topics such as environmental change, climate change, biometeorology. She has some um, series focusing on marine sciences and also on Arctic research. Um, our colleague in America, Zachary Romano, he focuses both on physical and human geography. Um, he has series on medical geography, remote sensing and GIS. Um, he also does environmental and energy issues, um, but particularly interesting, and I'm going to skip ahead um, to a slide now. Um, he also handles our Sustainable Devo Development Goal Series. As you will notice, there are 17 um, Sustainable Development Goals, but we do have 18 sub-series, and the 18th su sub-series um, 
is titled Connecting the Golds uh, and it aims to do just that. It's intended as a home for anything that covers more than one of the sustainable development goals um, or the sustainable development goals as a whole. Um, next in our team we have Aaron um, Schiller. He covers several topics across the board um, in physical and in human geography as well as sustainable research. Um, then we have my lovely colleague joining us today, Juliana, um, who has a significant focus on urban geography, on urban studies, on environmental um, economics, economic geography, um, all those kinds of topics. And um, she also has a special focus on Latin American studies. Um, now we're going to come to me. I focus more broadly on physical and human geography. Um, I also have uh, a university background in, in physical and human geography. Um, I couldn't decide, so I went 50-50 um, up until my master's. Um, I have some series, including the World Regional Geography series, um, the Historical Geography and Geoscience series, Innovations in Landscape um, Research, and also the Euro Geo uh, series called Key Challenges in Geography. Um, now, I've already introduced the whole group. Um, our ebook collection entirely reflects this diversity that we have in these interdisciplinary fields that kind of cover earth sciences and geography, environmental sciences, sustainability. Um, more than 4,600 books have been published so far in total and about 200 book series. Um, we have a total collection of about 200 um, book series. Um, our ebook collections do have global outreach. What does it take to publish a book? Um, why would you publish a book and why would you publish a, a book with us? Quite important, publishing a book can have many advantages. It does give you a good chance um, to connect with the community. And this is not just your community, but also um, the greater community that you might not have, have reached yet within, within your, um, with, within your uh, research area. Um, it allows you um, to build your reputation internationally. And we also hope that this will help you accelerate your career. Um, now, you might be thinking, how would it do that? How can we get that? There we go. Books do get cited, and this is um, one of the key points that, um, that we do get asked about, um, about our ebook citations. Uh, we did a document uh, analysis 2016 and 2017 from our science, uh, technology, and medicine collections, and we found um, that almost half of the citations are either from proceedings or other books. Um, so this is a significant number and um, I've also included a couple of books that we've um, published in this area that have been top cited um, if you'd like to check them out. The Seafloor is a textbook, then we have an encyclopedia handbook and the Hindu Kush Himalaya assessment is an open access book so that is absolutely freely available if you want to have a click through it. What kind of books do we publish? Um, the most common types of books that we publish are um, monographs. We publish uh, edited volumes. They're also sometimes called uh, contributed volumes where you have uh, one or a couple of uh, editors who curate content written by um, different author teams who uh, provide the chapters. We also do textbooks. We do proceedings for selected conferences. Um, we also do Springer briefs, which might be an interesting uh, category for anyone who's not sure um, if they can put together all the pages uh, that might be needed for, for a large book. Um, Springer Beef series are a very, very interesting series. Um, we usually um, look to publish books that have anywhere between 50 and 125 pages in there um, so that might be a good uh, a good start for some for some young research young scientists who are looking to publish perhaps their first book and want to um, get a bit of a feel of the process involved um, we also have other options these include uh, major reference works for example um, encyclopedias we have handbooks um, on some occasions we publish theses um, we have professional texts springer protocols we have lecture notes and we also do a couple of popular science titles um, you heard me before i was uh, introducing a couple of the series that we um, that we have in our portfolio books can be published either as 
volumes within a series. These are topical selections, there are series editors or there are series advisory boards. Um, we usually have um, relatively standard uh, layouts and standard covers. The nice thing about these, many series are um, indexed in Web of Science and some are even indexed in Scopus. Um, standalone volumes, these are more customized volumes. Sometimes they cover specialized topics that just don't fit um, within a series. Um, both of these um, options are externally peer reviewed. Um, so in that sense, um, that gives you a bit more of a feel um, what the options and what the differences are. Um, these are just a couple of the book series that we have in our portfolio. Um, as I said before, about 200 book series are handled by our editorial team, and this covers all areas of earth sciences, geography, and environmental sciences. Um, I'd like to highlight, for example, the World Regional Geography book series here. This has a lot of regional titles like the geography of, of the Netherlands um, or the geography of Slovenia. Um, we also have Global Perspectives on Health Geography, um, which is uh, publishing a, a couple of good titles now. Um, it's a relatively new series, so we're still looking for, um, for, for some more titles there. Springer Geography is one of the ones um, that I haven't mentioned yet. Um, this is a kind of more all-encompassing um, series that is indexed in Scopus. Um, we have the Urban Book Series, which is managed by my colleague Juliana. This has over 70, pipe, over 70 titles published um, already. Um, and then we have the Key Challenge in, in Geography Series as well. So um, we have different ideas that match different types of books. So we're starting to think about the process if you're thinking about publishing a book. Um, how are you going to go about it? What, what are you going to do? Are you working on a research project? Um, are, you, are you lecturing at a university? Um, do you see any kind of um, requirements that for, for a new textbook? Uh, are some subjects not adequately covered? Um, have you just had a research breakthrough and you really want to get that information out there? Um, so there's just different types um, of books that we do and, and they, they, they will hope we will certainly find one that matches your idea. Um, so let's get right on um, to the steps of publishing a book. As I said before, this starts with an idea. Um, and your idea is as unique as you and you can bring together your experience and expertise to bring something new to your future readers. Um, what's really important here is that um, alongside having a basic idea, you also need to be aware of whether there is a gap in the current literature that you are addressing in your, um, in your proposed project. Um, proposals do well if they address new angles or if they serve a very uh, particular audience. Um, for example, this may be, um, you know, you could be looking uh, at a textbook for under undergraduate students, but this is a slightly different audience than, um, for example, a textbook for graduate students. Um, you might be aiming to position your book towards researchers. Um, you might also be aiming to, um, to, to tend your book more towards uh, pra practitioners. Um, and this is really important for us to know so that we also know how we could ideally place your book. So um, you already have some ideas. Um, hopefully you've already reached out to us um, about those ideas and we can help you along um, in how to formalize this proposal. A good proposal usually in includes a concise uh, summary of the benefits of your book. Um, you know, what will be the novelties, what makes it unique, um, what, what gaps in, in research and what gaps in the, in the literature will you be covering, um, the need for your book, the audience and the market for your book, um, it says here a tentative title because the title um, often remains a work in progress um, until at least the proposal review um, has been done, sometimes even until the manuscript review is in. Um, we also like to see a tentative table of contents um, just so we can kind of gauge the structure of the book, um, see what makes sense. If it's um, an, an edited volume, then we like um, the, we like to have the CVs of the editors, just so that we know um, what kind of contributions you've um, you've you've had in the past, what your background is, and most importantly in this list is a realistic timeline. Um, I say that um, because it, it 
it's a lot of work that goes into into writing a book, into putting a book together. Even an edited volume takes a takes a, an immense amount of work, um, and it's good to be realistic about this. Um, we have some manuscripts that can be put together in as shortly as as half a year. Other manuscripts take two years or even three years to put together, and um, we have some manuscripts that take um, even longer than that to put together. Um, so it's really good to be realistic about that, um, just so um, expe expectations can be managed on all ends. Okay, so you've put your formalized uh, proposal together, now you've sent it to us, what, what happens in the next step? First of all, um, we, the, the publishing editors at Springer, will um, evaluate your proposal, um, check if everything's there that's needed, um, check the structure, see if, see if there's any pointers that we can still give. Um, after that, um, the proposal will go for external peer reviewing. This, um, depending on the feedback here, um, we can either accept it um, and proceed to contracting right away. Um, in some cases, this really depends um, on the proposal and, and all the stuff that's been sent along with it. Um, sometimes revisions are ne necessary um, according to the peer review um, comments. Let's move forward. Um, we can assume that the proposal is accepted and the contract is written uh, is written and signed. What can you expect after that? Um, we do provide um, instructions. We do provide templates, um, for example, key style points, um, reference style. So you have all that information on how we would like you uh, to cite. Um, we have information on, on permissions, for example, for third party content or like if you're um, reusing an, a figure that you have published perhaps in an earlier article, how you would go about um, kind of uh, requesting permission um, to reuse that if it's been, if it's been published before. Um, most of our chapters nowadays, um, most of our books get sold also as in, in ebook form on a per chapter basis as well. So it can give you some pointers on, on abstracts on a per chapter level that we sometimes like to see. You can include keywords, for example. So all this kind of information on how to put together your book, um, what kind of information is needed in the front matter. Um, we can help you out there. Um, we can provide a whole list of instructions there. Um, after which you can then go and, and start putting together your man manuscript. So, um, either half a year or a year or two or two and a half years um, further on, you're ready to submit the manuscript. Um, what happens next? Well, um, we will provide you a link where you can then upload your manuscript. Um, we'll have a look. We'll do a formal manuscript evaluation. Um, this is just uh, kind of us checking the structure, checking that we have all the files, checking that we have all the figures, that we have all the tab tables, um, that everything is readable, that everything is in good order. Um, in the case of edited volumes, um, we also um, need a consent to publish from the individual chapter authors. Um, so just to make sure that everything is, is done properly and we have everything that we need to proceed, um, we have this uh, formal evaluation process before the manuscript then goes out for, for peer reviewing. Um, again, this peer review can mean that the manuscript is accepted, the manuscript is not accepted and needs either few or very many revisions. Um, this process uh, can take per round anywhere between uh, two, two to three months uh, for the review and for us to be able to provide you comments. Um, and we, we we do try to be very um, very nice in allowing you all the time that you need um, to implement these revisions um, because the quality of the manuscript is um, is the most important thing to us really. Um, okay, moving forward to the data finalization. Um, when we finally accept your manuscript, um, we go into the process of data finalization. Um, this means we check all our metadata, um, we go through um, the back cover text, uh, marketing text, um, contributor information and affiliation to make sure that everything is, is correct and up to date. Um, we try to um, make sure that it also caters to uh, search engine optimization so that anyone who's looking for a book on exactly that content will find it with ease and will find it quickly. Um, 
after this data and metadata is finalized, um, the book then goes into production. We do very basic um, copy editing, so we hope that any manuscript that might still um, contain some typos, that we find those and correct those. Um, we then move forward to the type setting process. Um, this is where we then convert um, the manuscript that you've sent us into XML. Um, this can then gets typeset and sent to you for proofing. So you can read through the proofs before the book finally then gets published. Um, there we go. Um, we publish your book in several formats. formats. Um, the ebook is available via Springer Link. Um, these ebooks are usually available either as a whole or on a per chapter basis. Um, you can obviously also purchase the, the hardcover copy, um, the print cover. And what we also have um, is a my cover um, version of the printed book. This caters particularly to the needs of students. Um, so for example, if a student wishes to have a printed copy of a book that his uh, university institute library is subscribed to, um, then he can have that, he or she can uh, can get that printed copy for a, a much reduced price um, to scribble on during lectures. There we go. And what we want is we want your books to be shared with the world. Um, we have Springer.com, which is a dedicated web page um, with bibliographic and sales information. We have one of these web pages for each of the books that are published. Um, all of our ebooks are available on our Springer Link platform, which currently has over 50 million users. Um, we also um, ensure that there's a good distribution of your books via third parties, for example, uh, Amazon and iTunes, um, via booksellers around the world. We have an e-commerce team, spe special sales, and of course, um, what I mentioned before for my copies as well, institutional um, subscriptions. Um, to make sure that your book gets the distribution that it needs and deserves. Um, we also market via many channels. Um, we have covers and flyers for download and sharing. We also have self-marketing guides for book authors, and we can provide uh, banners for institutional websites. We also have dedicated marketing for your book. Um, this usually um, comes out in the form of e-newsletters. These are designed for specific audiences like librarians, booksellers, instructors. And I'm going to go into the um, individual section in a little bit more detail. Um, if you just browse and scroll through um, our topical collections, there's often a subscribe button. And you can subscribe either to news about a book series, or you can subscribe to news about um, just a topic or a subject area in general. And um, every time a new book is published, um, you can uh, you can get a you can get a newsletter or a notification um, for that. We also have social media presence. Um, so we sometimes do some promotional um, campaigns um, across these just to make sure that your books really get out there. Um, okay. On to us, Springer, as a part of Springer Nature. Um, so, Julia Springer uh, founded Springer back in 1842, um, originally as a bookstore and a publishing house in Berlin, thereby laying the foundations for the renowned Springer brand that we know today. Um, in 2017, we celebrated our 175th anniversary um, of the Springer imprint. Um, we had several other um, anniversaries under the Spring and Nature roof. Um, if I'm talking about the Spring and Nature roof, um, yeah, um, our aim is pretty much to advance um, discovery of publishing uh, robust and insightful science. We wish to support the development of new areas of research and also important, we want to make ideas and knowledge accessible around the world. Um, part of this uh, big Springer Nature family is Springer Nature. We have BMC Publishing. We have Palgrave Macmillan, who um, they also marked its 175th um, anniversary back in 2018. And uh, Nature, of course, marked its 150th um, one and a half years ago. That's to our past, um, but um, let's look to our present. Um, Springer Nature is a book pub publisher, is one of the largest um, academic book publishers in the world. Um, we publish books across all research areas from science, technology, and medicine. 
um, all the way to the humanities and social sciences. Um, we publish on average um, 13,000 new books each year and today, uh, to date more than 290,000 books are available to readers um, via our web shop or on our content platforms. We are also pioneers in digital book publishing. Um, we were the first publisher to offer all books in electronic format um, alongside the print version. Now to our future, Bring a Nature Book Lab. Um, we have a couple of innovations um, that I'd like to just uh, briefly talk about. Um, for example, machine generated content. We have, uh, we're working on living books and we're working on print and ebook integration. Now, machine-generated uh, co content, what does that mean? Um, this means um, we try to automatically generate um, content using a computational process, using an algorithm, and this recombines or newly creates content based on existing content or data sources. Um, this is a very automatic process, um, so when the manuscript is ready, um, this then just gets thoroughly reviewed uh, multiple times to ensure that the content um, meet, meets our standards. And um, one of the newest additions is the Climate, Planetary and Evolution Sciences um, volume that you can see here that we've just published very recently that is a literature review, a machine-generated literature overview. There we go. Um, if you're interested in the other title, the lithium ion batteries, this is just something that you can look through because this is freely accessible um, on Springer Link. This one's open access as an alternative. Um, the future of the book, the living books, um, these allow for online updates um, to be published um, as, within the book chapter, chapters. This combines the authority and the citability of traditional books, um, but kind of brings it into the 21st century with the speed of um, electronic communications. Um, this is currently in, um, being piloted um, for our modern reference works. Because being able to update modern reference works just um, just has, has a whole very modern feel to it. So um, that's what we're doing there. Um, print and ebook integration. Um, books contain more and more electro electronic resources recently. Um, this is also interesting um, for textbooks um, to be used in classrooms. Um, if you can get the kids and, and, and students to stay away from their mobile devices. Um, the idea behind this is um, that you can scan a printed page with your smartphone um, or tablet. Um, this can be done um, by an app and this will link you directly to a video or to another um, digital resource um, that is useful um, for whatever content um, you're doing. Um, one of the first books published was the Springer Handbook of Robotics where this was used, um, but obviously textbooks are a really good opportunity um, to make use of um, such integrational features. I'm going to very briefly also talk about open access books. Um, why would you consider publishing open access? This greatly increases um, the visibility and the readership of your research. Um, so open access books have 50% more citations um, than non-OA books on average. Um, there is a greater understanding of research outside the academic um, community as well. Um, it also facilitates, facilitates um, interdisciplinary collaborations. Um, and authors retain copyright um, for their own work absolutely entirely. Um, open app access books on average have seven times more downloads than non-open um, access books and they receive 10 times more online mentions. Um, so if this is an option, if there is funding available to you, um, if you need um, some help on finding funders, um, we have some online resources for our authors there as well. Um, that we can guide you to um, so that this avenue is also one, um, always one, that we can discuss um, with you in more detail. Last year in May, we published our thousandth um, open access title. Um, we're very proud about that one and we're looking forward to publishing many more um, because that is, that is the future. Um, I briefly talked about OE funding. Um, there's funding for articles. Those are um, article processing um, charges that we that we do um, that we do need to cover. 
for going the open access route, or if you want to pub publish a book with us, open access, um, then we do charge um, book processing fees for this. And one more slide here. If you want to follow us on um, social media, um, you can see all our handles or all, all our names here. So we have um, a Facebook page, we have two Twitter pages, we have a LinkedIn page. Feel free to give us a follow there. And thank you for your attention.